So this deck was incredible to play, to be honest. Like, this deck is so big brain. It's probably the most challenging branded build that I've ever built, but I'm certain that this is the way you're supposed to play grass branded. It was incredible. Of course, the poll over on Twitter and YouTube won by a very large margin for me to play grass branded locals. We went X1 and there is gonna be, of course, in the coming days, a new episode of Local Chronicles showing five rounds of me playing with commentary. Not like those other YouTubers who put up a three hour video with no commentary and just like the local sound. Me commentating everything edited to perfection this is the deck list that I played then, and before I start, I think that I need to test out the no grass build as well in a locals setting or a tournament setting rather. But if I'm being completely honest, like this was this was incredible. Um, being able to pop it lock through four hand traps is honestly quite something. It's really really kind of insane. So we'll get to that, of course, and you'll see that in Local Chronicles. We're playing three Fallen Valbaz. This is 60 cards, of course, so you need to be maxing out on almost everything. It's very, very important to do that. And then three Alubur. Again, like in some builds, you might not actually max out on this. My latest build played only two, but here you definitely need that for, uh, you know, for the grind game. And three Cartesia as well, because this is like the lifeline of the deck. Like, th this is what makes the deck tick, so you need to be maxing out on it. And then two Quam, because you do want to be able to tag out into another Quam with Grand Gignol. This is just the basics. And three Albion, this is, again, so crucial in Grass, because what Grass does, it's not like Tier Elements, where you get Chainlink 7 trigger effects, right? In Branded, what it does, it's it puts the important cards in the graveyard, and the only things that you can really do is Shrouded Dump Retribution to grab whatever you need, right? It basically searches Branded Fusion a lot of the times. And in the tournament, I, I actually drew Grass like five times. It wasn't even funny. I resolved it a lot, and I won all games that I resolved it besides one. But this is what makes Grass a good build. Like, th this card just does it, and the other card that does it is, of course, Serenir, which is Shrouded 2.0. It also dumps whatever you need from the deck. And we're also playing one Magnumet and one Bestial Rebellion. This is the Bestial lineup. These are so good in like Fiendsmith matches, which is basically everything that is meta besides um, Tenpai. Two Mercurier, because we are playing Allure. You definitely want to see this with Allure. And this is just a very good card that if you banish it with one effect, you still want the negate from the other one. So it's good. Then... A Stellar of the White Forest. This was kind of an MVP. This card is obviously, it's not super new in branded. I think I've talked about it in the channel already. But what this card does is that when you open a hand with like, when you go first and you have like board breakers in your hand, because we are playing things like Dark Ruler, Droplet, Eclipse. And sometimes you don't have access to the Quem and Cartesia side of the deck. So this is the bridge to that side, which means that you can send this instead of Lubelion. And if you have two spells to discard, two spells extra, and you can also send Branded Lost from the field if you already have it, it gets you to Cartesia or Quem. It's so important. It's not super bad for like drawing it, but it's like one in 60. And this was such a good bridge. It's, I really like this in this deck. So consider it. Um, you will see how I use it in the Local Chronicles video. And then one kit, one Sheeran, incredible. Like hit this almost every, every grass activation. It's good because this puts up another interruption. This can get you if you don't get to Branded Fusion, if you hit this with Grass, or just want to chain block from the deck and get an extra fusion with Branded Fusion. This does it so well. Gimmick Puppet Nightmare and one Tragedy. I, I mean, they made a mistake. This is so easy to do. I did this so many times in, in Locals. It's just, they made a mistake, I think. I mean, it's not, they could have also limited Branded Fusion and Band Sanctifier. But this is so easy to do. Again, you will see in the Chronicles episode, I did this through four hand traps. Four hand traps. This is the monster lineup spells. So obviously, 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 one branded fusion and one the grass looks greener. I opened it probably more than you would normally. 
you will see that my opponent cuts my deck and we shuffle everything. Like it's all recorded. You cannot say I stack the deck. I did open it a lot. I did win all games besides one game where we did it for the memes. I had thrust active. If I take branded fusion there, I might actually win. But in reality, it was funnier to take grass and see what happens. It was it was solid. I didn't win that game though. Um, it it's incredible in this deck. Like this is the deck that was born to run this card. Um, I really hope they reprint it soon so it's not as expensive, but overall, I don't think you must play it. I also don't necessarily think that this build is better. It's also much more difficult, I think, to pilot with grass, especially when you activate grass, but it's definitely super powerful. Like the ceiling is very high. One brand infusion does not matter. I can now say it like besides testing, I finally took it to an actual tournament. It does not matter. I mean, you will see, you didn't need to draw it. Pac said it beautifully on Sam's uh, video. He said it that brand, drawing Brand Diffusion was a luxury. And it's so true. Like, it's so on the nose, on the spot. You, didn't, you never needed to draw it. You can always get to it a million other ways. I would recommend you trying it if you have grass. And it was exceptional. Again, you will see everything in the, in the local chronicles. The basics. Three opening, three deployment, and three high spirits. I might want to cut this down. Like, I don't really have any reservations for, for the deck or, like, things that I would change significantly. But this might be the one. Like, might be cutting this down to two, maybe. Like, I kind of saw it more than I wanted. And sometimes, like, you don't have a way to use it. It is always a good discard. And usually, I mean, it's fine to run three. It's obviously great. But like Serenir, you open it, it's like game over. But I might, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Three Allure, I have a really hard time thinking about running uh, desires in this deck. I saw people running it. I don't think that I will be comfortable like banishing my only copy of Brand Fusion. There's also a lot of one-ofs here. So I thought Allure was fine. Desires is obviously super, super good. But Allure is as good, and there's great combos with this, and you will see that I could have had game in, in one of the games that I lost, the final game I lost, with a beautiful line with Allure of Darkness branded opening that I just forgot because I was a little bit rusty. Three Thrust, and in terms of board breakers, three Eclipse, and three Droplet. The reason I picked these, and instead of like Dark Ruler, is that when you're talking about the boards, especially like you, Bell. It's good against Tenpai, it's good against Snake Eyes. Um, the reason why I didn't put in Dark Ruler No More is because these are chainable. Like Dark Ruler No More was in the side, but because of Fiendsmith Desiree, you kind of have to start with this and it will automatically get negated. Uh, I do want to bait out interactions from my opponent before activating these and using them reactively and not proactively like Dark Ruler so that I can burn the Desiree and get value off of these. So I think these are correct. Obviously the side is like full of board breakers anyway. Um, white is very good when you have grass active or in the late game or just to play around branded fusion, uh, just to play around Ash Blossom or to make a pretty easy guardian chimera. I think in 60 and in grass, this card is mandatory. Lost in red, just one. Because we're not playing Desires, you don't need to. One Talents, one Foolish, and one Sark. Like, you know, in 60, especially with Brand Fusion 1, you need this consistency. And then, of course, one Call by the Grave, which, by the way, you can cut in 60, because, you know... I mean, obviously, it won me some games <laughs> when, I, when I drew it, but, yeah. And then, for the Traps, one Branded King, one Duplication, one Retribution, and one Banishment. I think this was solid in the main... It's not incredible, like this is very good, but I, this is not mandatory, I think. This could be in the side deck. It was solid in the main. It was able to catch some people off guard. I'm not sure if I resolved it. You'll have to see the local chronicles to find out, but this is super, super good because against Tenpai and against a lot of other decks, you just shotgun a dark, a light and darkness dragon lord in the draw phase, and it's like three Omni Negates on top of your board, and it costs you usually nothing. So, uh, maybe Blazing Brand King. I mean, it's good when you want to pop it lock, like, securely, right? But, yeah. So, the extra deck is 
pretty stand forward nothing super like spicy here three three uh sorry two 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 and then for the albaz fusion sanctifier lubellion rindbrum titanic light like the normal stuff i really think that like this is mandatory in my opinion because this is your grind game this is your best interruption and sometimes you just have to fuse with cartesia and this gives you so so much that i think like It'll be hard for me to play one. Some builds might need to play one, but I think two is like too good. One Furious, one Chimera, one Stapelia, one Quiridus, and one Light and Darkness Dragon Lord. Like these are flexes, probably. Like this is just too good right now with Tenpai. And of course, like you have to get rid of the Nightmare Pain, which is literally a pain in the ass. But these like Masquerade and Albalanidus are in the side for me. But if you don't want to play this, if you're playing a smaller build, you probably are not running this, so it's fine. And Quirtus is just a very good utility against all other decks because no one, no one else plays fusions but branded, besides like Desiree, but it doesn't really matter. And yeah, side deck was more board breakers. So the strategy when you're playing 60 in branded is that you need to be playing like your side patterns basically is everything goes in right so usually when i was siding for going second i would keep the droplet eclipse and then i add on to it like things like this basically right an additional like and and then if you need like these are in the side as well so if you're if you're going into time maybe you side this in instead of quartus but this is 11 more cards or like maybe sometimes you don't have the should all dragon inside there right or maybe this is not important if it's like snake eyes or um, Tenpai or something, but usually you would want to have all this. You put everything in. You take out all the all the spice, like you take out the in white, the Sheeran, the Estellar. Try not to take out consistency cards. The traps, I took out all of them, besides Retribution. I took out the Luvelion sometimes, because you, when you're playing 60, you need to see one or two, at least, because your your deck like the gas is works. But I was opening pretty well, like opening. Um, evenly with Droplet against Fiendsmith uh, decks. It was pretty solid. So these are like um, the board breakers in the side. And it's like a lot of the side, obviously. Now, there can be only one. It's just so good against every deck now that um, I drew it once versus I kept it going um, second against it was Fiendsmith Unchained. And I kept it going second. It won me the game because I was managed to pick up at the board a little bit, break it to some extent, set up something, and then place this. Activate it, and they can't clap back, right? They, they can't do anything on the crack back. And this is just searchable against um, Tenpai, basically. And then these two were in the side. I'm not sure you need this right now, to be honest. We'll see how good Tenpai is. It's solid, but maybe it's not that much of a concern. We'll see if anything else is missing. So please make sure to, of course, share this with your branded group and let them know that this is how it's being played. I fully like think this deck is amazing. I think branded is as alive as it was before. Um, Pack was such a genius when he said drawing branded fusion was a luxury. It's so true. And this is why the deck is still kicking ass. So if you're a good pilot with the deck, I mean, five rounds with this deck was a little bit taxing for me <laughs> mentally. I'm not gonna lie, it is hard. Losing like also three die rolls, like going playing into board, it's rough. Um, there might be a need for Dogwood here in a tournament. We'll see, because decks are still taking way too long to play. But make sure to check out the Local Chronicles episode that features this deck, because you will see this deck in action with me commentating over it. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, see you in the next one. Peace.